Good morning and welcome to today's children's message for June 19, 2022. Happy Father's Day to all our dads out there. We are on Unit 10, King Saul, Session 3, Saul sinned and was rejected, 1 Samuel 13 through 15. Like I said, it's great to see all of you again today. I've had so much fun experiencing God's Word with you and I can't wait to dive into another Bible story together this morning. Lately, we've been learning about King Saul, the first king of Israel, you know. The Israel, Israelites sinned against God by asking for, that, for the king. They rejected God's leadership in their lives. They wanted to be like the other nations around them instead of following God's commands. God did give them a king, but it would turn it wouldn't turn out the way that the people had expected. And last time we learned that King Saul helped bring victory to his to the to the Israelites and helped help unify the people. But it wouldn't be smooth sailing for King Saul. We talked about how sin is disobeying God. Sin comes from inside of us. It starts in our hearts hearts and affects the way we think, we speak, and the way we act. And sin separates us from God. Do you remember what the big picture question is? Of course you do. Let me try and adjust this just a little bit. There we go. Our big, big picture question is, why does sin separate us from God? And you know the answer. Because God is holy and sin has broken that relationship with God. Saul had a pretty good start as Israel's first king. But things started to turn bad quickly. Saul began to think of ways that his ways were better than God's ways. And we know that that can't happen. Saul tried to hide his sin from God. But, but you know, that's crazy and foolish because of course God knows everything. God sees our sin and you know what? He still loves us. God still allowed Saul to experience the consequences of his sin though. So let's get ready to hear more. You know, like I said, our story comes from the Bible. 1 Samuel Thirteen to fifteen. First Samuel thirteen to fifteen. And you know it talks about King Saul gathered an army and took some of the men into the hill country. And the rest of the army went with Saul's son Jonathan to the city of Gilbeth. Now Israel's em enemies were the Philistines, were in the land, and the Philistines came ready to fight the Israelites. They had more chariots. They had more horses, they had more soldiers, and the Israelites were outnumbered. They were afraid. Some of them hid. Saul wanted to ask for God's help. Maybe he thought if he made an offering to God, they would win the battle. But there was one problem. Do you remember who could make the offering? Only the priests like Samuel were allowed to give offerings to God. Saul waited, but Samuel didn't come. The soldiers started to leave, so Saul, thinking quick, decided to make an offering to God himself. This picture down here. And then, Samuel showed up. Saul, what are you doing? Samuel asked. You hadn't come, and the men were leaving me, Saul said. I wanted to ask for God's help before we went into battle against the Philippines, Saul replied. You have disobeyed gods, Samuel said. Saul was king, not a priest. It was a sin for Saul to make the sacrifice. 
You will not be king much longer. God is going to find someone obedient to be king. And sometime later, Samuel came to Saul with a message from God. God wanted Saul to attack the Amalekites. And God wanted Saul to destroy everything. But after Saul defeated the Amalekites, he only destroyed the things that weren't valuable. God told Samuel, Samuel, I regret that I made Saul king because he does not obey me. So Samuel confronted Saul and told him what God had said. I did obey him. Saul argued, I only saved the best animals to sacrifice to the Lord. But Saul said, but Samuel said, does God care more about obedience or sacrifice? You rejected his instructions. So God has rejected you as king. Saul admitted his sins and pleaded for forgiveness. Samuel said, God has taken away your kingship today and he is going to give it to another king. Remember, our sins have consequences. So how does this apply to us? You know, the people's king, that was Saul, did what he wanted. He did what he thought was best. But God calls us to die to ourselves and serve others. And the example we see so clearly is in Jesus. The people's king disobeyed. God told him what to do. And yet, Saul thought he knew better. God calls us to live in obedience to him. And that obedience comes from our love for him. The people's king was rejected. But you know what? Isn't it great that God loves us so much that in Jesus Christ, we are fully accepted by God. And that leads us our, to our Christ connection as to how. You know, sin, we always said, sin separates us from God. And sometimes God lets us experience the consequences for our sin in order to bring us back to him. God gave the Israelites a king, but Saul did not obey God. Saul sinned because he thought his ways were better than God's. But God's ways are always the best. And God had a plan. And he was going to send his son, Jesus. King Jesus trusted and obeyed God perfectly and died so sinners could be forgiven and accepted. And that's us. We are accepted into God's kingdom forever. When we are tempted to sin, we can cry out to God and say, God, help us. Remember that your ways are the best. We can remember that God loves us and wants us, wants what's best for us. That means it's best for us to obey God. Jesus died so we could be free from our sins. And knowing this tr truth encourages us to stand firm against sin in our lives. First, I'm going to show you this demonstration. I have this tube of toothpaste. I'm going to lower my camera so you can see this. Hopefully you'll be able to see it and then I will. You see right here, I am going to squeeze out all this toothpaste. Now I did that, right? I, I, I squeezed out the toothpaste, but now the job is to put the toothpaste back in the tube. Huh, how would I do that? That is not working. It's not going back in. No matter how much I try, I can't get the toothpaste back in. So, let me bring you back up. Oh, oops. There we go. Now we're back together. Back up here together again. So, you know, obviously, it's impossible for the toothpaste to go back into the tube. 
That is too crazy. But this demonstration can, can teach us about the effects of sin in our lives. When we sin, there's nothing we can do to undo what we've done. If we say some unkind words to your brother or sister, you can't unsay those words because you've already said them. If you hurt someone, you can apologize, but you can't make their pain go away. Our sin had consequences. God often allows us to experience the negative consequences of our disobedience as a way of teaching us about the effects of our sin in our lives. In our Bible story, Saul disobeyed God. When Samuel confronted him, Saul was sorry, but there was nothing he could do to take away the sin. And so Saul felt the consequences of his sin. And we talk about how sin separates us from God. Why does, God, why does that happen? Why does sin separate us from God? Because God is holy and sin has broken that relationship with God. But here's the good news. We don't have to live separate lives from God forever because Jesus has come to set us free from our sin and bring us back into a right relationship with God. We don't have to try to hide our sin because God already knows everything we have done. He wants us to live with open hearts toward him, confessing our sins and <clears throat> repenting, turning back to him, even when we disobey. Isn't that great? So we have our Bible verse, and this is what we, we learned, that key passage that comes from a vision that Isaiah had when he saw God. And experiencing God's presence made as Isaiah, even more aware of his own sin. In the verse that comes after this one, it tells about how an angel had placed a coal on Isaiah's mouth, taking away his sin. In this passage, we are reminded that we are lost in our sin, separated from God, apart from Jesus. He takes away our sins and sets us free. Again, Isaiah 6, 5. And I said, me for I am lost for I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of of a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king the Lord of hosts Isaiah 6 5 so to remember that when you think about all the sins that we've done let's close in prayer Oh, Father God, I thank you. I thank you for your word and for revealing yourself to us in the Bible. Please forgive us for our sins, Lord, and help us dwell close to you again. Help us to love you more each and every day and to obey your commandments. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen, boys and girls. Spend some time with your dad and happy Father's Day, and we will see you again next week. Bye-bye.